Chris Garcia. This is the Drink Tank Review of Books. And this week, we're reviewing The Half-Made World by Felix Gilman. Uh, this is a fantastic book from our good friends at Tor, uh, which is sort of the most recent uh, Weird West story. Uh, Weird West is a genre that goes back well into the 1900s. Uh, some could even say that some of the work that was being produced uh, during the Western period, uh, particularly the 1870s and 80s, uh, could certainly qualify. But this is really fantastic stuff. Uh, it is a story of a world that is not yet finished. Uh, there is an old world, the North here, which is sort of a Europe analog uh, in the 19th century. And then there's a West, which is much like the American West, the frontier. But beyond that, there is this unmade, unfinished, it's sort of a, a fantasy world. Uh, a world that can actually be affected by the emotions of the people who are in it. It's very strange. It's beautifully written. Uh, now, these three worlds, this uh, sort of unfinished, most finished, and then rough world, really is where the sort of book happens. And there are three sort of segments to this. There's the, uh, the science, which is represented by a group called The Line which is a steampunk sort of powered scientific world uh, which has formed army which is rushing across to conquer everything. And this is the most science fictional element. And then there's a group which is opposing the line which is called the gun. And the gun is a, really it's a series of demons who live in guns. They actually stay in this lodge, this mystical lodge, I uh, think Twin Peaks but without the whimsy. Uh, and then the individual demons that inhabit this lodge can inhabit guns, which are then given to agents who then get powers from it. So that's sort of our mystery, our, uh, our fantasy. And the last portion is a doctor named Liv. Um, we have the conductor, or the subaltern conductor, uh, Lowry, who is our sort of personification of the line. We have John Creedmoor, who is our agent of the gun, and we have Liv, who is uh, in the north, which is sort of untouched by line or gun, uh, but then as she comes to the west to go to a hospital, uh, because she's a psychiatrist or psychologist, I can never keep those straight, uh, one of them I've seen, the other one I haven't, uh, and she, her whole job is to go and try and help people who have been affected by the line's noise bombs, one of whom is an old general from the Red Valley Republic, which has been long gone, but both the gun and the line have wanted to, you know, fight. Uh, they fought and they pushed the Red Valley Republic away. But this general survived, but he's gone sort of mad. And now Liv has to try to help them. Well, John Creedmoor and Lowry of gun and line, respectively, are also trying to get that general. And the story is basically how that can happen. Uh, Lowry, Liv... Uh, Creedmoor and the general all end up interacting in various ways, and that's where the story is. In many ways, this is a story of what steampunk is, although I would have a hard time saying it might not actually be a steampunk story. It's actually more of a Western story. Uh, but it is. it shows the battle between the line, which is science fiction. Uh, that's a definite science fiction concept, all the science fiction tropes you can come up with, uh, and plus a little bit of Heart of Darkness to put it on for flavor. Bam! Uh, and then you have the fantasy, the horror uh, concept of the gun. And, you know, the interaction between the two makes it sort of steampunk. And that's what I really, really like about this book. Um, the only con minor per complaint I have is that it doesn't end. It, it ends at a point where you know there's another book after it, and probably one after that. But what I was really hoping for was that this was a world that would be contained that it would come to a point and it would stop, and it didn't. And, you know, that's a personal thing. Everyone has their way. Some people would probably want The Half-Made World by Felix Gilman uh, to go on forever and, you know, be able to live in this world, you know, make it like a wheel of time, except for not having the natural death stopping point, um, which doesn't seem to have stopped Robert Jordan. But, you know, it's really, it's a great novel. It is really deeply charactered. Uh, the character of John Creedmoor is one of those fantastic uh, anti-villain, anti-hero, middle-of-the-road awesome guys. Um, 
Liv is a very strong-willed character, and that's one thing that I think uh, modern steampunk, steampunk of what I'm calling sort of the third wave, uh, has is strong female characters uh, that are very, very nuanced and rich, and she's definitely one. Um, and, you know, I, I'm hoping that we get another book in this series that is just as good as this one. So, yes. So once again, that's The Half-Made World by Felix Gilman from our good friends at Tor. This is Chris Garcia and the Drink Tank Review of Books. I'm going to read Nubis Gates. I love this thing. <laughs>